So now that we've got everything cleaned, disassembled and cleaned, we're gonna put everything back together here. We're gonna start with our drive shaft for the pump up top. So we're gonna grab our larger O-ring here, slide it on there. Also, as you're checking these out, make sure to check the O-rings, make sure there's no nicks or cuts in them. Uh, if there's any part of, any part that's kind of damaged, it looks out of place, I'd replace it with the tune-up kit parts. Okay, slide these on, just like this. Slide those on. Then we're gonna use some Taylor Lube, put a little pea size shape on each one. And lube that up. Also, you can run down the shaft on this if you want a little bit. We just wanna make sure we stay off the hex head. Uh, everybody thinks that if we put a little lube on that hex head, it's gonna make it slide in and out a little easier. It actually will do the opposite and create like a vacuum to where you push it in there. After a week of it spinning around there, it's gonna be kind of hard to get out of there. You may not even be able to get it out. So just make sure to keep the hex head clean. Could you get some on there? Just wipe off the excess. Okay. Do a little bit on the outer one as well. And we're gonna put that in its place up under the hopper. So now we're gonna put the drive shaft in place. Just gonna push that in there. You might have to twist it a little bit till the hex head finds its home and push it in. It may look like it's sticking out a little bit. That's exactly the way it should be. Just out a little bit, make sure it's pushed in as far as you can get it. It might look just like that. Now we've got the shaft put back in place. We're gonna assemble our pump. I'm gonna start with this little uh, flap here. If you look, there's a little nipple on this, sticking on this flap here. On the pump, there's an actual blind hole here. So that blind hole is where that little nib needs to go into. And that'll help line it up perfectly. Once we get that in, then we're gonna put this O-ring first. Let's put our O-ring on. Okay, push that in. If you look on here, there's a uh, this little odd-shaped piece here is going to line up with the odd-shaped piece on here. That helps align it. Then I guess you can't screw it up too bad. All right, O-ring on the pump or the piston. Get that on there. I do not uh, lube these O-rings at this point. Usually what I'll end up doing is I'll take a little bit of the lube, uh, put just a dab inside on the housing like that, and spin it around the edge. This is just enough so that the piston and everything slides back together nice and easy, because the mix actually becomes the, the lubricant inside the system. Okay. So we're gonna slide our piston in. You wanna kinda make sure that that's lined up in the middle there. That's gonna line up with the pin on the drive shaft there, so we'll line that up here in a minute. And we're gonna take our assembly we put together here, if you'll notice, there's a little moon-shaped piece there. It's going to line up with the moon-shaped piece there. Locks it in. And take that pin, push it in from the top. You can always make sure it comes in the top. I don't even know if you can put it in from the bottom. I don't think it'll fit. It will not. So, just made it so you can't screw it up too bad. All right. All right, now that we've got our pump assembly put together, we're going to put it back together on the back of the hopper. So, we want to line, line up that to where our uh, drive shaft arm is there. Should slide right on. And we'll take our locking mechanism there and lock it in place. Now it can't move. Okay. Now we're going to put the uh, feed tube assembly back together. We're starting with our larger goofy looking uh, gasket here. This is a little bit of a fight sometimes to get these on. So just be patient. Pop them on just like that. Okay. Put the O-rings back on. Again, all these O-rings can stretch a little bit, just don't get too crazy with them. And we also wanna make sure we're inspecting them that there's no nicks or cuts in them. That's it, and I'm gonna slide that right back in there for now. I'm just gonna leave it just like that for now. So now that we've got the pump assembly put together up top, we wanna to start putting our uh, barrel back together. We're gonna to start with the drive shaft and our boot seal. So the boot seal can go on either direction. It doesn't matter which way it goes on. However, it does matter on the outside, there's a ridge you'll notice. If you turn this inside out, which some people do to clean, which is perfectly fine, you'll notice that the ridge is recessed on the other side. So we want to make sure that that ridge is on the outside when this goes on. I'm just going to push that down so it clicks onto the groove at the bottom. Just like that. Should be all snug against the bottom there. And we're going to take our Taylor lube. What I like to do is I like to squeeze the sides a little bit to kind of open up that pocket. Squirt about a pea size and about four times around the edge here. And then we're going to pack that in. So this is our last line of defense to keep mix from leaking from inside the, the 
barreled inside the machine. Uh, the gasket here, the boot seal is going to actually clip around part of the back of the barrel. Uh, this is just some extra insurance. So I'll slide that in. Again, if you go on the shaft is fine. Make sure the hex head on the end stays clean. Okay. We're just going to slide that in. Now we're going to drive, put our drive shaft in. If you look in the middle there, there is a, the hole in the middle is where our drive shaft goes in. Uh, the hole to the right there is where the feed tube from up top feeds into the barrel. So we're just going to drive this in. You may have to twist it a little bit to get the pop in and you can feel it drop in and, and seat. Uh, once it's in, it should just barely move. If you're still able to spin it around, you're not all the way in. Next step is we're gonna put our beater assembly back together and put it inside the barrel. I'm gonna start with the blades. Uh, you'll notice there's a pin on each on here on the back side and one on the front side. Uh, you can't always really screw this up, it'll only go on one way. If you try and put it on backwards, it will not fit. So just drop that on. I usually hold that one with my left hand. I'm going to grab the other one, put that on, and then I'm going to push this kind of inside the barrel a little bit. Let it sit there for a second while I get our shoes. So these shoes, there's a rip lip on the back side here. That needs to go on the back side, and they are specific. I'm trying to put them on the wrong way, it's going to be pretty obvious pretty quick that they're not right. So that on there. That one goes on there. So we're going to push this in, you're going to line up, you need to line up the oval head here with the oval on the drive shaft. You have to twist this around a little bit to drop in place. Once it's in, it should be back behind the front lip of the door here. So now that we've got our beater assembly put back in, we're going to reassemble our door and then, and then assemble the door back onto the machine. So I'm going to start with our little bleeder valves here. There's some little bitty O-rings. We're just going to Put those in back onto our grooves there. Slightly. They can be tricky sometimes. Especially the little ones here. These are the hardest ones to do, I think. Slide those on just like that. And then we're going to put a little bit of lube on it. Not too bad. Good handy part of fun. So after we get some, the O rings looped up, we'll drop them back in. I give them a little twist as they go in so the O-rings don't roll on you. These little ones in particular are pretty bad about doing that, so just be careful with those. If they roll up, pull it back out, re-lube it, um, straighten the loop, or straighten the O-rings out. So they go on. And we'll repeat for the other side. Twist a little twist going in. Next, we're going to do the draw valves. So the two draw valves on the outside are the same. So they don't matter which one goes where. Uh, the one in the middle has that funky H ring, which we need to make sure we take a little extra precautions with and put that back together. So we'll slide our orange O rings on here. There's fine. I'm just gonna twist that again going in. We want to make sure the little window stays facing forward. It doesn't matter if it's forward or backward as long as the window is facing towards the front. We're gonna push those all the way down. Put a lube on each of the O-rings on these as well. In between. Now it goes on the other outside. Twist it. Again, we're gonna make sure the window is facing forward. Push it all the way down. Last one is our twist here. So this one is a specific. This one has to go in the center. If you don't get this in the center, it's not going to work correctly. So I'm going to put the bottom ring on first. That one goes there. That one goes there. And with our H ring, these get a little more tricky. Get it on here. You're gonna need your pick tool to use to do this. Make sure you get up underneath there. Get it out of that groove. Real gently. Slide it down to the bottom groove. Then you can do your top one. Just like that. Make sure those are in the grooves. Make sure everything is nice and seated properly. 
little bit of lube on it. On the edge there, across that part of it, around the edge of the bottom. Just like that. I'm going to drop this in with a little twist. back together, the rest of the door back together, we're going to start with our bushings. Uh, the bushing has a, a wider end on one end, a skinnier on the other. We always want to make sure the, the wider end is up against the door. Okay, just like that. Now uh, we'll fit the other way. We're going to try to put, put it back together. And here's going to be pretty obvious because these actually sit inside the heater or something like that. And it allows it to wear down this piece here instead of wearing down your door. Okay. Um, so we always want to make sure the flat side is up against the door itself. Just like that side and then for our door gasket here you'll notice it's tapered so it's wider in the bottom skinnier at the top uh, we always want to make sure that's down the bottom the tapered end is down at the bottom there or the wider end and it's just going to pop in that little groove there on the, on the door tap it in place so a lot of people want to tend to stretch this around like this but you don't have to see it in the video but when you try and do that it tends to stretch the gasket out. It won't stay on the door correctly. So just get it into the groove and push it into place, just like that. On the other side, same thing. And I'll push it into place. Then I put the door in. I'm gonna make sure I have my door screws pretty handy here. So we'll put those up on top. Notice we have a tall one and a short one. So always remember tall top. All ones go to the top, short ones to the bottom. So I'm going to do this. I like to grab the gasket with a couple fingers here on each side. That kind of helps keep it from popping back out on me. Just slide it back in here. Yep. I need to push these down a little further. Do that again. All right, make sure the gaskets are back in place. You always want to make sure these are pushed down as far as possible when you go to put these in. Uh, because the paddles are up here and you'll hit the paddles with the, that's what I just did there. So, uh, we'll try this again. Just want to hold the gasket on. Slide it in. Once you get in, I'm keep a little pressure on the door while I get my door screws handy. It's all on the top. Get that one going. And I'm going to do a short on the bottom on the opposite diagonal corner. Get started. Snug these down by hand. You never want to use a tool to crank these down. If you do, you can bust off the stud, and usually when it does, it busts it off flush with the uh, front edge of the machine here. Uh, and it takes your machine down because you can't put the door on. And the tech's going to come out. It's going to take several hours for me to get that out of there, so it's not a good deal. I want another side here. Tall top again. And there's a short one on the bottom. equal pressure diagonally across from each other. We'll push our draw valves back up, touching the paddles up top here. Last thing we're going to do is put our handles back on. We're going to start taking our draw handle and our uh, pin here. And this pin can go in from either side. So if you want to put it in from the right side, you can. If you want to put it in from the left side, you can. It doesn't matter. Also, each one of these handles are all the same. so. Put them on each front or the right one, the left one, or the middle one, doesn't matter. So I'm going to put one in here and through the first one, part way through the block here in the middle. Put my second one, you may have to push these up a little bit to get in sometimes. And through. Flip that over in that little groove there, and that locks it in place so the pen can't slide out while the machine is running. You just want to make sure that each one of these actually holds down like they're supposed to. Okay. 